Stick around until the end of the episode for details on something special we want to give you guys, our OG listeners. Thanks for being classy. Now here's the show. Welcome to That's No Class. I'm Brian Baruman. And I'm Morgan Darian. Welcome back to the home of class, where we talk about the most interesting and funny things happening in the news and in our lives, try to figure out how to live classy, and call out no-class moves. This week in news, Brian brings us trouble with Netflix. I cover an Illuminati scam. We double down with double news, then introduce a new segment. And as always, we end with our no-class picks. <laughs> Illuminati scam. Heck yeah. Uh, we had a callback, a listener telling oh. me that his parents heard our Friendship Bread episode and says they were dealing with the stress of the Friendship Bread chain when they got married 46 years ago. Amazing. Okay. So, <laughs> this has been a burden on society, apparently, going way back. Didn't know. <laughs> really cool. Thanks for letting me know about that. All right. Let's get to some news. Now, here's the news. All right, we're going to start with a lawsuit by one of the parents of Operation Varsity Blues against Netflix. If you don't know what Varsity Blues is, you might know it better as the college admissions scandal. Oh, yeah, I remember that. There it is, recognition. It happened back in 2019. A bunch of actors and rich parents got busted by this guy who was running a huge scheme to get kids into elite universities across the country. Mm -hmm. Felicity Huffman went to jail. was a big deal. Yeah. Netflix made a documentary about it in 2021, apparently, called Operation Varsity Blues, The College Admission Scandal. Mm -hmm. But there's one parent who was initially charged in the whole thing, but eventually had those charges dropped. He never took a plea deal, like many of the other people who did get lower sentences, and he maintained his innocence the whole time. And a big part of the scandal was that these kids were getting accepted into college through insiders at the university that were part of the sports programs. Mm -hmm. Some of these kids had never played these sports, but the scheme's masterminds set up these fake photo shoots and stuff to make it look like they did play sports. Yeah. And this is where this guy in the lawsuit's major complaint against Netflix comes. He says there's a scene in the movie where they manipulated his words because he was interviewed for it and made it look like there was a stage photo shoot for his son for the water polo team. Uh But he says it's all made up because his son actually was a Division I water polo player who'd been competing for years. No. He he wasn't a fake. (gasps) This guy's saying he warned Netflix about it and that all this stuff is in the public record. So now he's suing Netflix for damages (gasps) and claiming defamation. I mean, yeah. We'll see what happens with the case, but I wanted to use this story to talk to you guys about Netflix and their documentary practices. <laughs> and I'll give you guys a little insight about this in terms of journalism. Journalism is a high stakes game. And we're all taught in journalism school something called media law, which kind of breaks down to don't do these certain things because people will sue you. <laughs> and you can't really play loose with facts. And I can't yeah. say that Netflix did this, but I can tell you this. These streaming platforms do not have the highest journalistic standards. Yeah. If you guys remember, we watched them. Netflix and Hulu both had documentaries on the Fire Festival a couple of years ago. Remember those? Yes. Sorry, I got distracted. There was a bug in my face. Was it an ant? No, it was flying. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, both. Yes, I re- yeah. Yeah, those two documentaries. We Great. watched them both. The sandwich, the so cheese sandwich funny. or whatever it was. Yeah. Both of those had journalistic ethics issues that right. I saw right away. But I'm not saying that you can't play loosey-goosey with documentaries and stage these new reenactments <laughs> and stuff. But you better have all your fact-checking down yeah. pat if you want to avoid lawsuits. But again, who knows? If you want to know, for my buck, the highest journalistic ethics always come from PBS Frontline. They <laughs> may not be as sexy as a Netflix documentary, but they're true. Fair. So Fair. That's what's up. That makes sense. What do you got? Good. Good little update there. Yeah. Okay. I have two news stories because you know I love schemes and I can't resist. (laughs) This first one takes place in Nebraska where a woman discovered that if she swiped her rewards card twice at a gas station pump, the double swipe would turn the pump into test mode. So she racked up $28,000 in free gas. (laughs) Here's my thing with her. Should have kept it to herself because then she started selling the use of her card to others, giving them (laughs) discounted gas. So now she's awaiting trial. My only issue with her being the schemer, and she definitely is, (laughs) but my only issue with that, man, you have a mistake like that in your system. You deserve to get schemed at that point. Like, call it a loss and move on. (laughs) Y'all did this to yourself. I mean, thank you so much for bringing this up. (laughs) This is one of the best stories. I just read about this the other day. 
<laughs> Here's it's my thing. Crazy. Is it stealing? Like, I don't I'm know. Never, I'm not that kind of person that's like, get away with whatever you can get away with. But sure. yo, is it stealing? All you got to do is double tap your card. Like, yeah. Your system is busted. <laughs> the fact that I'm doing it for this long. The, see, and you're right. She shouldn't. Have no, like that's where have brought she went the other wrong. person in because that's criminal. Yes, but if mm-hmm. she had kept it to herself, and she's just like, oh, I didn't know, I just oh, double tapped in my know. car. I don't check my bank statement. No, you know, I don't I look check, at my anything. I never look at it because my budget is so good. <laughs> yeah, like I never check. Like, <laughs> is that a crime? Is it a crime to take advantage of a system that is broken, not of your own doing? Yeah, she could have just been like, I just, I thought I had so many rewards. Yeah, I was like, wow. Well, it really, I, this is a reward system. Is it's an incredible reward system. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. Hey, you know what? Amazing. Hey, <laughs> we all hope that it would happen. Yeah. We would all love that to happen. Oh, amazing. Every time we go to the gas station. What a treat. God. What a what a what a what a G. I like, know. Really. I know. Except also like you took it. Shouldn't you have got gone greedy. further. You yes, got greedy. Exactly. You got greedy. Okay. <laughs> second news story is from Scotland, where a man and his firm called House of Illuminati said, "Hey kids, we're making a Willy Wonka attraction for you." He uses AI to market his attraction ahead of time. The advertisement boasts, quote, a universe where confectionery dreams are brought to life. Everyone's so excited. The parents pay $41 a ticket, and the first to arrive walk into essentially an empty warehouse. <laughs> there was a single bouncy castle and a few plastic props and empty walls. So the first wave of ticket holders see this, record it. Some call police to get their money back. Immediately <laughs> yes. call the cops. They're like, This is a scam. (laughs) The second wave of experience goers are not even let in. The guy who made it finally issued an apology, saying that he learned a lot from this experience and that he didn't realize so many people would be interested. (laughs) And he is committed to rectifying the situation and giving the money back. Meanwhile, people have not received their money. And this dude is like, I ask for a bit of time to process everything that has happened. Like, what? What, like you, emotionally, you need a mental health day because your scheme you didn't work out. People and you got busted on it. Yeah, like nah, dude, you nah, got caught. Nah, <laughs> rules are rules. If you get caught, you gotta pay up. You gotta pay that money back. Amazing. Well, how much? Okay, how much money did he think he was gonna get? He's charging forty four ahead. Like, what did he think? I'm gonna make two hundred bucks on this and no I don't big? know. Yeah, like he didn't think that so many people would show up. So he used AI, meaning that like it was a really cool looking ad yeah. that like AI made. Yes. Like things that weren't there. Like Sega World, a Type magical in, world of show, chocolate. Show me Willy Wonka's yeah, world. Exactly. Freaking AI, man. The people who got scammed made a Facebook group called House of Illuminati Scam, and it has more than four thousand five hundred members and counting. Oh man, I wonder if they all got scammed or if there's just some people that just want to get in it's on the like, tea. Yeah, or just like watch the journey. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Exactly, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that's a that's a wild one. I know. Dang. You got caught. You got caught, dude. Well, you thought that would be a You gotta try, I He's guess. Like, I got a bouncy castle, and that's the same thing as Willy Wonka's that's, chocolate factory. That's all kids want anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you have personal news? Uh, I do. I watched a documentary I really loved this week, and it was all about fonts. Oh. And Morgan thinks I'm nuts, and almost every one of the people that I've been raving to about this also does, except for my homie K. Shout out to my homie K. But it's yeah. called Helvetica, and it's all about the font Helvetica, Great. which I've learned is really everywhere, and it's really cool. <laughs> and I just found the documentary really interesting and inspiring, and everyone thinks I'm nuts, but what else no. is new? No. I mean, I already know this about you. Yeah. You're my nerd. I have... I have interests. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's good. I'm sure I would like it. Here's the thing. It was not an interest before I saw this documentary. That's true. I wasn't like, oh, I'm like super into fonts. I was like, it's crazy that someone made a documentary about this. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, this is what's crazy to me is that you clicked on it. I, I saved it. It was on my watch list. Amazing. Letterboxed. I feel like now that I'm thinking about it, I may have already watched it. Apparently, it's a really good documentary that people have seen. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, it was good. But- I don't know. You mock me now. I know. But when it came out 15 years ago, you guys were probably all on it, like all talking Maybe. about it. Look how smart and sophisticated we are with our Helvetica <laughs> documentary. It's not cool. Amazing. Anyway, okay. what have you got? My personal news is that I twisted my ankle literally walking. <laughs> Actually, no. Okay. I figured out that I twisted it in the crack of these two panels at work. It's like cement. There, There's like a dip. Lord knows I'll never see workers' comp. So <laughs> I had to work my shifts. Really painful. 
I mean, I didn't mean ask about workers' comp because LA has a new law about sick days that apply to me, and I asked three times about it when I was sick earlier this year, and they never gave me my sick days. So I stopped pushing because the last person to ask about something that was owed to them got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Better keep your mouth shut. Yeah. You know what's good for you. Yeah. Jeez so. Louise. I'm sorry. Your, your ankle swelled up like a boot. It's bad. It's bad. No bueno. It's legit bad. I have a giant cankle. And we're dealing with health insurance issues. It's Ugh. just, it's rough out here, guys. It's rough Wait. out here. The podcast really needs to start making money. Yeah. Tell people about us. <laughs> Tell people. For the Lord of Jesus we Christ. We need to fix Please. Tiny Tim's leg over here. <laughs> All right. When we come back, we've got some more stories that happened this week. And mm-hmm. then we've got a new segment with solutions for our troubled world. Thanks so much for being here. We love having you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for more news in our segment we creatively call Double News. Now here's the Again! <laughs> Stupid. The fly's really bugging you, huh? Yes. Oh, uh, well. It's everywhere. Should, no, it's fine. Anyway, okay, we're not big on celebrity talk on TNC, but oh. this story is great for my double news niche where I tend to go after stuff on the lighter side. Mm. So the royal family is in the middle of a scandal. Have you oh, heard of this? Oh, I just was Googling it last night. Okay, so Princess Kate had abdominal surgery in January, which whatever, people make a big deal. Mm-hmm. She hasn't been seen in public since then. Who knows why? But mm-hmm. people think that this is sus. But for British Mother's Day, which we learned on Oscar night is celebrated at a different time than here in America, yes. Kate posts a picture on social media. I should actually more accurately say Kensington Palace posted a picture because yeah. people in these celebrity areas, especially the royals, don't actually control their own posts, everybody, in case he didn't know that. <laughs> so this photo comes out, and it's Kate in a chair surrounded by her three kids, you know, like smiling, happy Mother's Day. Uh-huh. But almost immediately, people notice there's something wrong with this picture. <laughs> Some parts don't line up, like hands and zippers. People can tell just by looking at it. That's been edited at least. Yeah. And what I'm thinking is so interesting about this story is because we're in AI photo times now. Like you just said in your story about the freaking Wonka thing. Mm -hmm. Manipulation is so easy and wild. And I think that people in newsrooms around the world were thought, oh, this is an AI generated picture like completely. Yeah. Because AI does weird things like this, messes up the nitty gritty details like the edges of hands and all that stuff. Kate, within a few hours, issues an apology saying she didn't mean to cause any confusion. She was just experimenting with photo editing, just like anybody else. And they take the picture down. But people are going nuts. Conspiracy this and where's Kate? Yeah. Like she died in surgery or something like that, implying that she's not really there and that the picture is totally made up. Like Kate was inserted in the middle of this Kate picture. Kate is just at home on Photoshop <laughs> right now? Yeah, right. So, oh, you don't believe her story? No. Well, if you look close. Did she say it with her own words? She. Her face? No, because no. she hasn't been seen. No, it was a statement. Yeah, so she, she didn't on... even say that. <laughs> You're bu- anyway, okay. Well, if you look close at the picture, <laughs> it looks actually like it's a composition of maybe parts of a few individual pictures. It doesn't like, really look yeah. like when AI messes things up. It looks almost like a grid of different mm, pieces. Layered. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, you know, you might do this for a variety of reasons. Better lighting in one part, better mm-hmm. expression in another part. A photo analysis apparently said that it was it was edited in Photoshop Twice. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, all those photos probably are. Yeah. But anyway, so it was done poorly, though. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I think that this is funny as a person who works in the media uh-huh. is that it is a really crappy Photoshop job. And I would think that the royal family would hire better people <laughs> to do their PR, get a professional, not some rookie. <laughs> but, probably you know. like some young person that's like, yeah, I could do it. Yeah, Maybe it was They're Kate. Like, sure. Maybe Kate was like, let me do this one. How about that? And they're like, they're like we yeah. have to listen to her. Yeah. But now She's they're like, like, never again, Kate. No. Sorry. <laughs> this is not your forte. <laughs> but people are still saying, you know, where is she? Where is she? I know. I'll tell you where she is. Paparazzi took a picture of her with her mom less than two weeks ago. Really? Chill, everyone. Yes. They did? Yes, they did. I couldn't find it. TMZ on it, because TMZ is always oh, like yeah. on TMZ that. Yeah, TMZ is you always on that. it. But it is a funny story, and I do appreciate the really memes. Funny. We have one listener who puts a lot of the memes up, <laughs> and I really 
love them. So it's extremely funny. That's, really That's what's going on. Okay. Did you hear about the Oakland Bakery news? No. <laughs> okay. This guy, Sam, owned this bakery, thought to be the last kosher bakery in the area, along with Another restaurant in Delhi called Saul's that's in Berkeley, and oh, he's like, which we love. Yes, that's the one that's your favorite. That is one. my favorite, that's your favorite one. Okay, one. I thought it was, and then but I wasn't sure. Okay, yeah. amazing. So he owns that, mm -hmm. or partly, or like is co-owning that or something, and he okay. has his bakery, and he's like, man, I don't have time for both businesses. So he puts a call out saying he'll sell his bakery for one dollar, but the applicants have to write him an essay describing themselves, their qualifications, and why they want to own the bakery. Okay. He gets over 200 submissions, and this guy, Bayer, had a sneaky foothold because he already knew to... What is his name? Is it Bayer? Sam. Bayer? Bayer or... like oh, an animal. Oh, okay. He already knew Sam from other business dealings. He wanted to continue to sell Jewish baked goods, so he paid $1, got the business, the customer accounts, and recipes. His family has a bakery business and a sweet shop, so he's qualified. Okay. But, and you might know what I'm going to say here... Kind of cheated by reaching out personally, and all those other applicants didn't stand a chance. And way to give someone a chance who looks exactly like you, like literally picked yourself. But whatever. I mean, I was all stoked to see like this moment of oh my gosh, this person got a chance of a lifetime. No, nope. it wasn't. It was some an in dude, industry insider, already has a bunch of businesses. It's borderline nepotism. So lame. Yeah, it was really lame. I had not heard that story, but that is super lame. Duh. I okay. do agree. I was going to say, how did he convince him? If if they all he had reached to out because they like have, he reached out and talked to him in person. Ah. Uh, okay. My second story <laughs> comes from the skies. <laughs> there was a Delta flight <laughs> that was turned around because a bunch of maggots fell on a woman from an overhead bin. Sick. I'm just going to pause here. Why are there maggots in someone's luggage? I don't know. Turns out. The maggots were from a rotten fish. Why is a rotten fish in someone's <laughs> luggage? They never explain it. So I turned to Reddit, and those guys are not helpful either. Never. The article is like, we had to turn around and then clean the plane. Just brush that shit off and get a wet wipe. You want to turn all the way around They turn this? the plane around? Yes. What psychos? I mean, unless they were still on the ground. But even so, deboarding and boarding again alone Terrible. takes forever. Terrible. I would be unbelievably pissed at the lady that didn't have the wherewithal to simply clean herself off and continue the journey. Yeah. Like, people are weak. This is not a safety issue. No. Hard eye roll from me on this one. Maggots. Yeah. And yes, the guy who was transporting the rotten fish also a madman <laughs> and receives my second eye roll. Like, this is insane. No, this is crazy town. Oh, I would be so bully. If I was on that plane. That's super nasty. Like, just brush it off your shoulder. Yeah, I mean, kids puke on their parents, and like, parents don't say turn the plane around. Yeah, turn it around. There's a something on me. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. All right. All around. Overreaction. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up Double News here with something new, and we're going to call it the soundbite of the week. <laughs> so here's the story in a nutshell. The building that the New Orleans Police Department uses is old and crappy and falling apart. Mm -hmm. How bad is it? Well, at a committee meeting, Police Chief Ann Kirkpatrick says the evidence room isn't even safe. The rats eating our marijuana, they're all high. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when we come back, we've got some new ideas for drinking in public. And then, of course, we've got your no-class picks. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. Part of what Mogo and I love about TNC is working together and talking and thinking about life and the news and all the other things we talk about on the show. But sometimes we come up with an idea together, mm -hmm. something we think might make the world a better place somehow. And so this week we're debuting a new <laughs> segment we've come up with and that we submit to you, our dear listeners, and we're calling it Big Ideas. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Great Scott! It worked! I finally invent something that works! <laughs> okay. So here's the situation. There are two types of people in the world. People who are overly nice when they're drunk and people who get aggressive and mean when they're drunk. Mm -hmm. Our big idea is... There should be a way for everyone to know which people are which when they go out with them. Because you never know who you're going to be dealing with if you've never been out with them before. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to know 
ahead of time. Yeah. So, well, the whole idea came about because Brian said there's a bar in San Francisco that has cats. And I was like, what if an angry drunk gets in there and tries to hurt a cat? We can't have that. Can't. Angry drunk should not be allowed in that bar. And then we just started spitballing. Yeah. So here's <laughs> here's how our system, who it would benefit. It would benefit three groups of people. Okay. Their <laughs> groups of friends who won't have to have their good time ruined by that person. Sure. Bystanders who won't have to potentially get in a fight with or just generally be annoyed with this person. Okay. And the bartenders who also won't have to deal with demands for more drinks or the rage if the drunks get cut off and get mad about it. So here's how it would be implemented. Okay. An inconspicuous little mark is made on a person's ID. Maybe a little <laughs> black circle in the upper left corner. Barely visible, but people know to look for it. Uh -huh. When they go to a bar, everyone has to have their ID checked at the door, but they also have to get their ID checked by the bartender when they're getting drinks the second time. Okay. Seeing this, the bartender knows he has a potential angry drunk. <laughs> he can serve this person drinks, but he knows after a certain number of drinks, this person is cut off. Bartenders so already have to do this. Okay. <laughs> Let me know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make sense. It does Bar make sense. Bar this is very complicated. <laughs> I don't know how the bartender is going to keep track of it's all these people. It's a simple system. It's how like, will they oh, remember the person? They already do, don't they? No. They can, like, bartenders are amazing people. Yes. They can take orders yes. <laughs> when it's so loud inside a place that they literally can't hear. So they could look in the corner of an ID and be like, I know this guy, I know no, this guy. No, but later on, when they're ordering more drinks, how are they going to remember who had a dot and who didn't? They will anyway, remember. We need to work out the well, kinks. They have to hold yeah. the ID. Anyway, okay. Continue. Continue. <laughs> bartenders already have to do this. Currently, though, they just have to use their own judgment on how drunk a person is or wait for a person to make a scene until they cut them off. Sure. So I bet you bartenders would appreciate the system despite your doubts. Well, my idea is that they don't get served alcohol at all. They can drink that at home on their own. But when they're out and about, they get served like soda water or hugo. See, I don't, I don't think so. I think they still are allowed to join us. They just need to have, be helped a little along with responsibility. Okay, because well, then we need to work out a different system. Like, their credit card is cut off. Maybe. Well, I was thinking they use a punch card. Yeah, okay. Like That's fine. But the thing with the punch card is that you would have to test them ahead of time and know how many drinks it takes for them to get to angry drunk mode. Okay, yeah. Well, this goes right into my main idea, which okay. is how to test for it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we, we get them drunk yeah. and then throw them into scenarios. One can be like... You'll find out immediately. Yeah. Even just sitting at a table with no scenario, an angry drunk is an asshole immediately. Well, step one would be like someone bumping into their shoulder a bit or an accident. <laughs> yeah. Step two is getting passed over when trying to order. <laughs> step three is to test an argument about like sports or politics or movie or something dumb. Step yeah. four is someone flirting with your person. Step five is your significant other or a stranger turning you down. Step six is another person getting in your face a little. So then you can be like ranked according to when you snap. And that's how drunk you can get. Yeah, but I still say an angry drunk, step one, you will know. Like as soon as they get to that level. But sometimes not. Pretty not much always. Drunk every, I mean, they're not angry every time. Exactly. There's a level. But here, I realize to the people that now are like, this is wild. And what are you talking about? I know that this sounds like a fascist measure of social <laughs> control, but we have identifiers already for people who need certain medications. It's true. Morgan's dad has a bracelet he wears all the time. Uh -huh. For example, if there's a medical emergency, there's something that he needs. Our system, our system, identifies the angry drunk to prevent an emergency ahead of time. Or if an incident does happen, police or EMTs, after restraining them and listening to their endless expletive-ridden screams, can pick up the idea and say, oh, he's an angry drunk. Yeah. And maybe they'll feel <laughs> the some category. sympathy. Yes, exactly. Maybe they'll feel sympathy for them. Maybe yeah. they'll help them find a way to deal with their emotional or substance use issues. True. But I want to be very clear here. I'm not saying that being an angry drunk means that you have a drinking problem. That's the sad and terrible burden of the angry drunk. They might That's not true. be a habitual drinker. Maybe they only drink sometimes socially or on rare occasions, but it's just once they reach that level, yeah. they turn into an angry drunk. Yeah. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. It's true. It does something different. The chemical reaction is a little bit different. There's from something brain. different there. Yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, we could have a similar test for a lot of things. Dating, number one, I especially mean, for women, but for men too. You yes. need to know ahead of time if someone is an asshole. <laughs> we have the technology. I've been, I've been I bet told, we can figure this out. <laughs> I've been told that it's 
It's very easy and quick to identify my assholeness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've been well, told that many times. Mm, Some have said, as gets, soon as I open my a, mouth. This, <laughs> this throws, a, throws a wrench in my, in my ideas. I'm different now. I'm different now. <laughs> I was thinking like plane rides. You can still ride the plane, but one, if you've been identified as an angry, sober, or drunk oh. person, you have to take a pill to fall asleep. So no one has to deal with you. <laughs> You're like, what's that word? Um, oh, like sedated. <laughs> yeah, sedated. <laughs> they get sedated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's... It's a little too far. I'm not or if you to... really want to stay awake, you have to give them permission to like jab you with a needle if you get out of control. <laughs> See, Morgan's more extreme. <laughs> I'm just talking about a little dot in your ID. That's it. I'm not talking about any like physical action being taken against people. I mean, whatever. I think we just solved it. I so, think we boom. did, though. I think it's great. What do you guys think? Is it a good idea? Fix the world. Big idea? I think we'd fix a lot of problems. Are you that angry drunk? Is it only when you drink tequila? Anyway, let us know what you think about this great idea. Yeah, you're <laughs> <All> welcome. <right. laughs> when we come back, it's that time. Your no class picks of the week. <laughs> Stay with us. It's time to wind down the show here, bring it to a close the only proper way with our No Class Picks of the Week. You're just a jealous, no class, lazy bum. No class pick. All right. My no class pick this week, QR codes at restaurants. Oh, You yeah. sit down at a bare table and you either have it <laughs> taped onto the table, which mm -hmm. is extra no class, or it's on a little stand, which is slightly less lower class. <laughs> Morgan has convinced me, and I hope all of you too in her Clear the Plate segments, that you pay for the service at a restaurant, the theater, the elegance. <laughs> so what's up with this QR code? We're still going to eat with metal utensils and tip our servers and do all that, but they can't give us the decency of paper menus? Mm, yeah. It's just like jarring to me when I see it still. It's like mm -hmm. COVID trauma coming back to me. <laughs> I don't want to see that anymore. As a journalist, I have had enough of that period in time. Yeah. I don't want to relive oh. that anymore. Bring the paper menus back. Please give me an escape from all of that. I, until you said it right now, I forgot how crazy it was in the news during COVID and that you just like did that story yeah, over and over 24 hours a 24 day. 24 hours a day because everyone else in the world didn't work. And I was the person who yeah. never stopped working all through COVID. Yeah. Literally. That was horrible. A frontline worker. I had a piece of paper that if I got stopped <laughs> during quarantine, by a cop, I could say, I am an essential worker and I need I'm to go to work. People need to watch the news of the same story 50 yes, times today. 50 million times, 100 million times, nothing but that story. Oh my gosh, I forgot. No, yeah, I agree. The QR code is a bad deal because, and also just for like people who don't really like to use their phones and stuff. It, that's and older people also, too. Also, I agree. Like, it's like why, why give confusing. another excuse for the phone to come out it's here? It's so annoying. I'm trying to have a classy time. Exactly. This is the time to put phones away. Yeah. Thank <laughs> okay. you. <laughs> I have a class pick. Ooh. I have a young friend who has held a conventional job for a while, and she recently started doing some consulting and some workshops to help entrepreneurial groups get better at talking about their product or giving pitches, that sort of thing. Very cool. But she's new to working in this way. She's used to having a nine to five. And when she thinks about asking for money, she was stuck in her old ideas of what she should be paid per day. Ish. Okay. So this company reaches out to her and they're like, please give us a quote for a day with the whole group and you'll have individual sessions with some people. And she gives them a quote based on what she thinks is fair. Um, and the businesswoman sees my friend's quote and reaches back <laughs> out back or back out and is like, hey, we have a budget for this and it's double what you asked for. So we're going to give you the whole thing. And she was like, we've gotten crazy high quotes from other people and I can't pay you so low. You cannot accept that. <laughs> so she, she asking for, she's asking for like what she would make in eight hours working at her red I job. I think so. Or like, like a little bit over that. Dude. Or like for individual sessions and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And so I was kind of rocked when I heard all this because like business people aren't supposed to do this. It's like, true. It's not in their best interest as no. a business to pay more <laughs> exactly. for something. But yeah, that's super, really super classy. Very classy. Part of me like melted a little because I was like, oh, women helping women. Yes. 
Oh, is it? It was it was women and women. Yeah. That's like cool. Ev, yeah. Hey. That's classic. All about it. Yeah. Close very... that wage gap, everyone. <laughs> exactly. But demand it for yourself. I know. Well, and it's just nice because like if someone's like older than you and stuff and you don't know what to ask for maybe it's when you're true. young and when when so, I started freelance really cool. world, I yeah. was like I didn't one time I asked yeah. for jobs and I'm like, Oh my god, I hope they give me this money. Right. And they never question it. They're like, Yeah. Because yeah, it's like that. Yeah, because you don't know what's normal. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad she got paid. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, I like that story Class a lot. all around. <laughs> yeah, class all around. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that is our show. Thanks so much for being here and hanging with us. We, again, want to remind you guys, the OG listeners, that we thank you oh. for being the early crew that got us off the ground, and we appreciate you. Send us an email. Contact us anywhere so we can add you to our list of TNC VIPs, send you a free gift just for being one of our early listeners. We're tossing around T-shirt ideas, merch, that kind of thing. Free for you, our <laughs> classy first friends. Deadline, March 31st. Get on that list. Like and or subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. We're on all the apps. Episodes also on YouTube. Reach out to us on Instagram, at That's No Class. You can also send us an email or a voicemail, That's No Class at gmail.com. Call 877-7-NO-CLASS, or as Morgan likes to say, 877 877- Seven six six two five two seven. Call us up. We love having your stories on the show. Stay classy. Stay classy and have a great week.